Hello everyone, get ready to dive into the world of gaming with PST, the narrative gamer where we explore the list and game law and deliver the feeling of gameplay right at you. Today I'm going to take you on a journey through my early gameplay on Blue Protocol as a spell weaver. Buckle up because it's going to be a wild light. So I start off by creating my character, I choose to try out younger looking character this time and I customize my character to have a distinctive experience. The character creation process is incredible detail in anime style, except it might lack a bit of hairstyle due to potentially add as gacha related feature later. When I was happy with my character, I jumped into the game and was immediately blown away by the graphic. I know I have tried many AAA games before, but anime style like this is still something. The game music is so top notch with epic orchestra theme that really set the mood. My character starts off as a bike like body that, after some mysterious incident, we just turn into human form. I have woken up just to see Feste getting chased by some random enemy, which she told us that she would stall the time so that we can run away from danger. But I end up beating all that monster. I get hostility from Feste, she learned how powerful I could be. We end up teaming up and joining Adventure Guild. The story is pretty much resembled to those recarnation anime, so if any of you ever wish to be part of one, this is your chance. As for the story detail, I will be explaining more in a separate video later. The spell weaver class is all about dealing massive damage with elemental spells. And I quickly got the hang of casting normal attack spell and fire spell to take down my enemies. I also learned how to manage my mana, which require you to charge your mana using action button. You can move while you're charging mana, so this reduces your flexibility in compared to Archer cards. You got new spell unlock for every new level you gain, and you have 4 skill slot to customize them. Each of the skill could convert into alpha and beta variants in later game too. Note too, for any of the YouTubers or streamers who mention that spell weaver is the strong cards or strong get cards, Please bear in mind that they are either casually play or not really taste the game enough. This best spell weaver has the benefit of attack from range, making them gain advantage in the situation when you want to still kill or kite enemy quickly for your solo quest against other player in the MMO. Japan community has a huge complaint after the end of network trace. Lending that Spell Weaver and Twin Striker are the worst two cast of the game that clearly require rebalance. Why? Because they are the only two main DPC class who couldn't do any other support and yet their ability to deal damage only on pair level to other class, especially the Twin Striker class that low HP and hard to evade boss solar attack. So it is usually the one who die most often. Thus, making DP6 fail off by a lot. Some twin stikers try to then attack and keep themselves alive, but they could only go so far. For Spell Weaver, they nerf the charge spell from beta test on this network test, and rebalance spell modifier, which is bad. Also, people feel that their damage isn't high enough to justify in comparison to Archer class who can support heal and crowd control. Why? during damage at the same time. Many Japanese also feel afraid of the future threat that spell weaver class that they might be required to carve more elemental weapons than other class, since element is more important thing in this class. But anyway, to sum up, spell weaver is supposed to be a DP6 class who should be the most excel in AoE damage among the basic class. Let's hope that here tester complain and 
bump up power a bit in the actual release. As I progressed through the game, I also got to experience some of the game epic boss battle and dungeon. These are some of the most challenging part of the game, but they are so incredibly rewarding. I can already see so many death from boss mechanic during the early phase of the game. Content in this game are locking behind the button power system. You can only light this stat by equipping better gear, so it's basically a MMO style gear check. You do not gain button power from leveling up, so you will have to upgrade your gear and leveling at the same time. The last board is 30 party member style, so it's a bit messy. I give the similar verb to Korean MMO style where you get separate reward for dealing more damage or taking more damage. This one, despite look difficult and majority got one shot. It is easy, consider how you can keep reviving and coming back. You simply need to dish enough damage to kill the boss before time expires. Monster in this game does not drop gear, so you will have to farm materials to craft them from receipt board, which actually record all the necessary quests for you to obtain those materials. Overall, my few day playing Boo Protocol as a Spillweaver was an incredible experience. The graphics, gameplay, and story are as good as I was hoping for. I'm definitely looking forward to continue my journey in Blue Protocol when it's come out. So that is my experience playing Blue Protocol as Spellweaver. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe button for more Blue Protocol content. Thank you.